September 12th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 2 Timothy chapter 4 from the New Testament. I solemnly charge you before God and Christ Jesus, who is going to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the message, be ready whether it is convenient or not, reprove, rebuke, exhort with complete patience and instructions. For there will be a time when people will not tolerate sound teaching. Instead, following their own desires, they will accumulate teachers for themselves because they have an insatiable curiosity to hear new things. And they will turn away from hearing the truth, but on the other hand, they will turn aside to miss. You, however, be self-controlled in all things, endure hardship, do an evangelist work, fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as an offering, and the time for me to depart is at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, the crown of righteousness is reserved for me. The Lord, the righteous judge, will award it to me in that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have set their affection on his appearing. Make every effort to come to me soon. For Demas deserted me, since he loved the present age, and he went to Thessalonica. Crescents went to Galatia, and Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, because he is a great help to me in ministry. Now I have sent Tychicus to Ephesus. When you come, bring with you the cloak I left in Troas, with Carpus and the scrolls, especially the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me a great deal of harm. The Lord will repay him in keeping with his deeds. You be on guard against him too, because he vehemently opposed our words. At my first defense, no one appeared in my support. Instead, they all deserted me. May they not be held accountable for it. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me, so that through me the message would be fully proclaimed for all the Gentiles to hear. And so I was delivered from the lion's mouth. The Lord will deliver me from every evil deed and will bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greetings to Prisca and Aquila and the family of Onesiphorus. Erastus stayed in Corinth. Trophimus I left ill in Miletus. Make every effort to come before winter. Greetings to you from Eubulus, Pudens, Linus, Claudia, and all the brothers and sisters. The Lord be with your spirit. Grace be with you. God, sometimes the words that are used in the different versions of the Bible don't resonate with us. It has nothing to do with your word, obviously, but our own filters, that there's certain words that mean certain things to us in our life and other words that, that don't. Uh, so we may not completely grasp, grasp something the first time. We may need to read it in different versions of the Bible or really research what some of those words mean. In the English standard, standard version of the Bible, uh, for this particular passage, uh, Paul actually says, um, And by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. And the version we just read from the Net Bible was... Uh, preach the message, be ready whether it is convenient or not, reprove, rebuke, exhort with complete patience and instruction. And I'd always heard in season and out of season, and to me, just with everything that's happened in my own life and what that kind of means to me, it felt like you would show me opportunities to talk to people and you would show me other times where um, I didn't have to talk to people. Um, in season, out of season, but that I had to be ready at all times. I had to know enough to talk to people and you would fill in everything else. And so I was really good with that. And then reading this particular passage in the Net Bible, where it said, preach the message, be ready, whether it is convenient or not, for me kind of put a whole different spin on it. I had never thought of it being convenient or inconvenient to tell other people about, about you. Um, I've always enjoyed talking to people about you, but then I thought a little bit deeper about that because the particular word, convenient or not convenient, kind of captured my heart. Um, I have a, 
exorbitant amount of people who want things from me. Um, this is not my choice. Um, this is just how my life has happened. Um, and I know it sounds really bad to say that, but it becomes overwhelming and incredibly draining when constantly people want things from you. But that those relationships aren't balanced in any way. And it's, it's not that I would necessarily want all those relationships to be balanced. I understand that there are just always going to be people out there who need things. But it seems like my life, for as long as I remember, it's always been out of balance. I've always been drained and constantly looking for ways to make sure that I get filled back up so that as people come to me wanting things, uh, that I am there for them, that I am not unavailable. And I think about this passage and these words from the Net Bible, as opposed to other versions I've read, to be ready whether it's convenient or not. And there's many times, God, when I have received emails and I literally just roll my eyes. Don't they know that I'm going through this and I'm dealing with this and I have this to do and I have this and this and this to handle? And don't they even care enough to start their email with, how is your world, Janelle? Even if it's fake, at least it's kind of fake um, at, at trying to show some sort of... Um, interest in my world but it's just these demanding emails over and over and over again wanting things but reading this particular part to be ready whether it is convenient or not to preach the message obviously also refers greatly to living the message so god i i pray that you will work on my heart in those areas one that you will fill me up so that i am always ready to share the good news of you. I'm always ready to talk to people about you. I'm always ready to take care of people. Um, you obviously send them to me for a reason. And that overwhelming feeling that I feel I know is just me not relying on you and me not trusting you. But part two of that is allow my heart to receive those requests in the right way. They may not be sent in the right way. They may be sent from a very selfish point of view and you can work on them for that. Um, but when they come into my life, I don't want to receive them with a selfish heart. I want to receive them with, oh, how awesome is it that, that God sent another person to me because he trusts me with what I'm going to do for them, tell them about, share with them, uh, how I'm going to take care of them. That should be what my heart is like. Um, not the, gosh, this is a really inconvenient time and, and can't they stop and think about what my life must look like and why must they always want something from me? So God, I thank you today for different versions of the Bible, um, different words that mean different things to us depending upon what our lives are like and what we've experienced and what filters we read things through. And, and sometimes I know that you just put things into the Bible that we aren't ready for and then there'll come a point in our life where we are suddenly ready to hear that and hear it in a way that you have shared it with us because our filters are open at that point. And I just thank you for this message today. It's definitely a timely one that I need to hear, um, but more importantly, I need to understand and actually work on my heart so that it's not just 75% of the time that it's convenient for me, but that all the time it's convenient for me to receive uh, these requests of help that come into my life. God, thank you for trusting me to take care of your people. I love you very much. In your son's name I pray. Amen.